This is a totally new experience for me. Instead of sitting down at a desk, I'm standing up in a spare bedroom at home and I'm recording a new video based on something that I was asked about yesterday. I was asked, how do I write an article and how do I do it without struggling, without delaying over the time to put it together? And what sorts of thoughts and ideas do I have when bringing that to fruition? So let's look at what an article is and how an article is structured. I typically write three formats of articles. So I'll write a short piece, which might be 400 words, which is about the equivalent of a sheet of A4. Then a larger article might be 750 to 800 words. And probably the largest article I will go to without it becoming too cumbersome and it's becoming almost a paper, a research document, is 1,200 to 1,400 words. So those are typically the dimensions or this word count figures that I have in mind when somebody asks me to commission an article or a blog post. And so I work to those sorts of numbers in my mind and I'll query that with the client to say which of these works for you or how, what sort of scope do you want me to produce for the actual document. This map in particular is a map of part of Somerset from Taunton down to Lyme Regis on the coast. And it's a useful map for driving journeys, but it's a very useful map for walking on footpaths because of the detail and the level of detail that the map will go to. If I'm going to write a, an article about how to read a map, in that phrase I've probably got the title, how to read a map. I could divided into how to use or how to work with an ordnance survey map but to be to be useful for seo purposes or search engine optimization how to read a map is a great place to start in that article i would probably open a paragraph with the function of a map and i would particularly focus it for outdoor use by walkers and hikers and maybe by cyclists as well because this map would be absolutely perfect for cyclists to work with on a day trip out into the country or cycling from one of the towns here down to the coast. So I've got my title, how to read a map. I need to explain, let's say I'm writing 800 words, I need to perhaps use a couple of sentences to introduce the idea of the function and utility and portability of one of these ordnance survey maps. It will stick easily into a rucksack or a bike bag and can be brought out to read according to the need of the traveller at the time. So I've got my title and I've got an introduction on the usage and utility of the map. Then I'm going to look at how to understand which way up the map is. Well that's easy. All the language is written horizontally across the map as you would in any normal document and the way the map is based this is the north this is the south, east and west. So you can orientate yourself within the map. Also, the map has a scale or a, a level of um, measurement. So that if you look at a centimetre or an inch on here, you know what that represents in real life. Learning to read the symbols on a map, you would use the index on here, which talks about for example, these, these points here are the roads and down here and further on we have footpaths and landscape signs to show marshland, forest land, beaches, um, agricultural land or pasture land. So I can look at this map straight away if I've read the index and I can see that the blue line there is a motorway. The red lines here are main roads and the yellow and the brown routes are very much minor roads and that might also indicate the sort of traffic that can be restricted on those roads. So let's look at it. We've got a title, How to Read a Map. We're introducing the function and use of a map as the introduction. Then we might open with a paragraph on using the index so that you know that what you are seeing on the document here has meaning and what sort of meaning you can attach to that. So for example, using the index again, 
we can see buildings and what sorts of buildings they are, churches, public buildings, post offices, telephone boxes, that we still have them. <laughs> we can see those items on the index and then we can go to our map and identify where we are by looking at the landscape around us and matching it to the demonstration of symbols and roads on the map in our hands. So we've got a title, we've got an introduction, we're learning to use the index to identify the features of the landscape in front of us and relate them to the paper map that we've taken from our pocket or our bike bag. And then it's a question of using the map to discover where we're traveling to, where we've traveled from, and our experience of that venue or location. I've used this map for a particular footpath that goes from the south of England and the English Channel to move up through the landscape, visiting interesting places and looking at routes that follow an old prehistoric footpath across the country. And what I've done is I've, I've, I've made notes about places that were significant. I've highlighted monuments that I needed to visit. So the map becomes a living tool and something that I can actually take down and read. It's up here because it's in a guest bedroom with some postcards about England for visitors who stay with us in our Airbnb. But the map tells its own story. And in writing an article about how to use a map, 750 to 800 words, so it's a two page, quite short form article, but it's in the median of my four to 500, 750 to 800, or around about 1200 range of the three article types that I'm often commissioned to write. But it's easy for me to summarize what I've covered so far and talk about how you might next use a map in your travels, how you might use a, a map as a reminder of experiences that you have had and enjoyed whilst on those travels in the past. It might also be useful to say, this is how you can read a map to talk to somebody and recount to them what you experienced in the journey that you went on. So that's my simple example using something very practical. It's not a, a prop in the sense of being something false. I was thinking last night after I was asked about how I put articles together and how I write them to choose something really simple. And I saw this and I thought, OK, how to use a map. I hope that's been helpful. Any questions you've got about creating articles for yourself or how to put those article ideas down onto screen and create something from them, just drop me a line. One other thing I'll say is that, for example, when you're writing an article, if you want it optimised for search engine tracking and usage and, and finding, think of a few key words for an article. In an article that's only got 750 or 800 words, I wouldn't use many focus words. One of the words I would use is Ordnance Survey, because that's the producer of this particular series of maps. They call This one's called the Land Ranger series. I also might put in a word like topography, which is how to read and look at the landscape around you when you're moving and traveling through that same landscape. The client wants you to write a series of 10 articles, for example, Determine what those 10 themes would be and get agreement from your client that these would be the titles. Think of two or three topics to be covered under each title and perhaps a couple of keywords for searchability that are relevant to the article that you're going to write. That was going to be 10 articles at between 5 and 800 words or 750 and 800 words. You know how long that's going to take. Maybe you need about an hour probably an hour maximum for each article, then you can, you can create them quickly. You can focus on the title to give you your core theme. Think of the introduction and two or three subsections and then finish with a conclusion that is helpful or informational or uplifting that leads to a call to action by the reader so they engage more with the work or the products or the services offered by the party that's commissioned you to write the articles. I hope that's really helpful 
And please, as always, share your comments with me. If, if the video itself is helpful, please like it here on YouTube and reference it to friends if they're looking for the same sort of themes or topics. In this case, how to write an article. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next one.